Good morning, folks, from Jeff's Little Engine Service. This is our victim for the day. We need to do some deck work on this. I guess the engine's running just fine, but uh, we need to replace the belt. As you can see, it's come off and it's partly shredded. The guy gave me some new blades to put on here, so we'll be doing that. He thinks one of the spindles is uh, making a lot of noise, so I'm going to check all the pulleys and the spindles and just kind of uh, service this deck. It's a Craftsman 46 inch. Nice little uh, Briggs and Stratton Intech. Beautiful poop brown paint job. She's a beauty, but we're just gonna service the deck today. 46 inch deck. Precision. It's a big deck, 46 inch, but it only uh, has two blades, so that's good. All right, let's jack this baby up. Let's lower the deck so we can get a little better view of how to take off the belt. You can see from here the belt's already came off, the engine pulley anyways. So let's see what we need to do to get it off these other ones. So if you look here, uh, you have these belt keepers on both sides. There's that one. And uh, should be able to see the other one right there. And it's pretty easy to slip the belt past those. You just have to kind of bend them out of the way. So I think I can take this side off without removing this. See how that just comes off there? And on this side. Now we just we can just lift this up a little bit, hopefully. It's only two bolts, why not? Yeah, you can see we probably could have got that out of there, but that'll make life a lot easier when we put the new belt on. Luckily on this model, we have a little diagram of how the uh, belts are supposed to go. But whether or not we'll be able to see it, I don't know. So let's take a close look at how this goes on here first. Looks like on this side, uh, yeah, the belt just came right off, so that's good. Now it looks like this is, you have pretty much have a straight shot on the back of the belt from the main pulleys from here to, to that one there, so that's a good way to remember it. And then they're already detached here. So you can see this belt keeper, there's one on each side up in front. Just have to lift it up and over. And looks like we just have to deal with this idler pulleys. This little piece right here is your belt keeper. There we go. Yeah. And just pull this whole dang thing out. So that's pretty rare. Usually I have to remove uh, 
one of these brackets or something to get the belt off, but this is pretty convenient. I don't even have to remove anything. You don't even have to take the deck off to replace the belt, so that's nice. I want to point out one of the common errors that people make when they're replacing their belts. Uh, that error being that they don't get the belts on the inside of the belt keepers. You can see we have two of them on this idler pulley. Uh, on this idler pulley over here, if you can see, we have one. So you always want to make sure to get your belt on the inside of that, as well as, uh, you know, on the inside of these pegs when you're going around your main pulleys here. But yeah, there's always the, these keepers, and sometimes they're very easy to overlook. So testing a few things out. That pulley is in good shape. It's not loose, wobbly, nice and quiet. That one's a little wobbly. The bearings are still good, so I think we're okay on that one too. So if you don't have one of these, you can still get it off with one of these, but it's a real pain in the butt and you have to use a lot of curse words and shed blood and that sort of thing. You do have to have a block of wood and what you do, you wedge the block of wood up in there so when you're turning it to try and take it off, uh, the block of wood keeps the blade from turning. But we're not going to do it that way because we have one of these. It's a 5.8 socket. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. See how easy that was? Starting to get a little worn on the star pattern here. You, you can see you always want to check the, the condition of the little star pattern up there. I think it's still enough of a pattern to hold the blade in place though. So I think we're okay. Get to the other side here. That star pattern's been, that star's been worn down a bit too. Yeah, I might have to replace that shaft. I barely have any of this little star pattern left on this side. Both of these blades are still in pretty good shape. I could sharpen them up. They're not bent. You can see if you hold them tight, nice and straight. That's how you can tell if they're bent or not. But he didn't want me to sharpen them. He just wants me to put this new set on here and that's the part number from Craftsman so you can see what I mean about how it's getting a little boogered up and this is the right side this is the new blade now I can see that when I put it into place Hopefully I can get it in place. Let's see. So that's the problem once some of these stars start getting deformed is then they won't fit the blades as well anymore. But if you can get it on there, hmm. I've spent some time filing these stars before to get them to fit. Unfortunately you have to replace the whole shaft in this spindle and if you're gonna replace the shaft you might as well replace the whole dang thing unfortunately so that's that's why I'm trying to avoid having to do that. It's possible I could get this on enough 
and then get the bolt started and like smush it down into place. If it goes over the star, I'll be happy with that. It won't be going anywhere. So let's just try that. So I can see up top here, there's still a gap. But when I tighten this down, uh, hopefully that gap will go away. Let's see if you look, there's still a gap there where that blade won't go down all the way over the star. It's in position. I'm just going to tighten it down and hopefully that gap will close. Luckily, I was able to get it to cinch down all the way on that star, so I think we're good on this side. Unfortunately, this side uh, is in much worse shape as far as missing metal around the star. We're going to try the same procedure though and just get this blade to cinch on. We'll see what happens. Oh, trying to get this blade to fit on here. It's tough to even tell when it's lined up. So if that's the case, just take a look around. And I have a little file here. Sometimes you can file off the little piece that's causing all the problem. This one looks kind of flattened out. It would be best to replace these shafts, but as I said, it can be a real pain in the butt and expensive because you may have to replace the whole spindle. seems to be trying to go on. Let's see if we can just force it on here. Sure hope this works. I don't want to have to replace that shaft or the whole assembly. Oops! Did I break anything on my camera? Let's hope not. I think that's lined up. I could just hold it in place. blades on too. See, that was pretty sketchy. As I said, uh, replacing the shaft would have been the best bet, but I think we're going to be just fine here. While you're under here, you need to remove all this dirt too. This stuff builds up, causes rust. Just scrape it all off. So I didn't show you over on this side, but if you look, we are cinched all the way down.
Okay, <clears throat> so we don't have a belt on it. So if I turn this on, that'll take off our blade brakes. And if you go, give the blades a good spin here, you can see that bearing's pretty good shape. You wiggle it, not much movement or knocking sounds. So that side, that side is good. And from the top, get a little bit of movement, but I think that's acceptable. Here's our other side here. Give it a spin. Seems to spin pretty nicely. Wiggle it back and forth. No movement really on whatsoever on that one, so the bearings are good. Now remember, you can't spin these freely unless your blade brakes there are disengaged, and that's why I have the, the blade engagement on, so those shoes weren't stopping the pulleys from turning. So when you engage your blades, what happens is this pulley gets pulled tight against the belt and that's what gets things working um, so it's important that at the pivot point here you can see I've already lubed it all up but you want to make sure that that pivot point moves freely when you're trying to engage the blades uh, a lot of times that'll get rusted up over the winter time uh, you can snap your cable trying to engage your blades if if that's rusted shut so you make sure it's good and lube and working freely I'm also just gonna put some lube WD-40 good old stuff on the idler pulleys how much crap we ended up with. So, should be pretty easy to put this back on since we didn't even have to uh, remove anything to take it off except for this. So I think I'll put it around this first. Bring it all the way over. Make sure to put it inside the keeper. Looks like you can get it around the pulley. Okay, just, just make sure the belt is all the way around the pulley and on the inside of that keeper too. You don't really need to take this off, just make sure that the, uh, the belt is tied around the pulley. Okay, so then this one. Make sure to get the belt on the inside of the belt keepers here. They're just little spring-like things. There you go. That one goes up to the engine pulley. Let's go ahead and finish the other side here. Let's go back over to this side. Don't forget on this one, folks, there is a keeper on that side. That'll shred your belt if you don't get it inside that. see how we put the belt up through there. We'll do the same on the other side. And there we go. We're already on.
this back into place. Another place you want to lube up are these pivot points here for your pulley brakes. So let's go ahead and test him out. We're focused on the deck here, remember? You guys don't need to see me. a better view here. Pretty quiet. I'm happy with the results. Thanks for watching, folks.